Your red blood cells are just like a middle school lunchroom. Let me explain. Hey everybody, Organized Biology here where we make difficult biology concepts simple. And today we're discussing AVO blood typing, one of the most frustrating concepts to understand if not taught properly. So make sure you watch all the way through this video to fully understand how it works. So first off, AVO blood type, you may have heard of that before. And what these letters refer to are actually little flags or identity tags. So we have an identity tag for A, identity tag for B, and an identity tag for A+. And I'll get to that a little later. And your red blood cells can have any one or multiple of these ID tags, otherwise known as antigens. And depending on which ones you have is determined by your parents' genetics. So they basically pass on these traits to you and it'll determine which ones you will or will not have. So let's take an example of one blood cell. Let's say this red blood cell has the following ID tags or antigens. So if you look at this guy, what blood type do you think this person would have? Well, if you look at it, they have the A antigen and the positive antigen, so therefore they would be type A positive. So in this person, every single one of their trillions of red blood cells would look exactly the same as this one. Awesome. Well, let's take another example. Let's say we have this guy who has these antigens. Okay, so in this case, we just see the B antigen on this red blood cell. So therefore, what type of blood would this person have? Well, we would have type B. But here's the thing this person is lacking that positive antigen. So therefore we determine that this person is actually the negative, meaning they don't have that positive antigen on their blood cells, okay? So let's try one more example to make sure you really get this. Let's say this guy looks like that, and I'm not gonna draw anything else. What type would this person be? Well, in this case, we need a new letter. We had A and B previously, but now we need to look at O. O blood basically means the absence of A and B antigens. So therefore, this person would be type O, which again means that we have no A or B antigens. And also, we see that this guy doesn't have that positive antigen either. So what would it be? Well, it would be O negative because we lack that positive antigen. Now, there's a bunch of other blood types. For example, AB positive. In that case, we'd have a B on this guy. Or you could also be B positive, where you have this one and the positive antigen. So this typing basically determines which antigens we do or do not have. But why do we need to know these in the first place? Well, you're probably learning this because you need to know compatibility. Which blood type can donate to which blood type and which blood type can receive from certain blood types. So let's get into that next. Now, this is where the middle school lunchroom comes in. And before we start that, I want you to know the cardinal rule for blood type compatibility. Your blood cannot receive a new antigen. And guys, that is the only rule. If you follow this, you can understand all of blood type. Let's say we have a person with their red blood cells looking like this. First off, as a quick quiz, what blood type would this person be? Well, they only have that A antigen, so we know that they are type A, but then we lack that positive antigen, so therefore we are type A negative. Awesome. So now I'm going to draw a few different blood types over here, and you tell me which one can actually donate to type A negative. Ready? Go. All right, so here are your three blood types. We've got this guy here with no antigens, this guy with just the positive, and then this guy with the A and the positive. So following this rule, the receiving blood type cannot receive a new antigen. Which of these three could donate to type A? Let's go down the line, shall we? So first off, this guy has no antigens, so we know he is type O negative because he has no AB antigen and he doesn't have the positive antigen. And since he has no antigens, if he donates to A negative, that is okay. Because he's not receiving any new antigens. There's no antigens on type O negative. So that's why type O negative is actually the universal donor. But then let's look at these guys. In this case, what type is he? Well, he's type O because he doesn't have an A or B. But then he's got the positive antigen, so he's type O positive. Can he donate to this blood type? He cannot because he has this new antigen type A negative has never seen before. So this blood type O positive cannot donate to A negative because we'd be introducing that new antigen. And then finally, we've got A positive. Well, in this case, we've got the A, right? So can't we donate to type A negative? Absolutely not. Because once again, we have that positive antigen that that guy does not want. So let's think of this in terms of a middle school lunchroom. Think of these antigens almost as a specific group that you would find in a middle school lunchroom. Let's say A, for example, would stand for the athletes. The B would stand for those band geeks. For the last one, let's just say these are mathletes. So in this case, let's say that type A negative, this is the lunch table. And the lunch table in this case is full of those athletes. 
in just athletes. Keep that in mind. So let's say we've got some mathlete athletes because we both got the A and the positive and they're gonna try to associate with just the jocks. Well, does that work? No, because the jocks don't like those mathletes getting in their way. So this would not work at all, right? Furthermore, if you just take the mathletes and they try to sit with the athletes, that ain't working either, right? But then the last one's interesting. This last one has no association whatsoever. So think of them as almost like uh, the Switzerland or the Canada of the blood types. It doesn't really have, <laughs> it doesn't really have a strong identity. In fact, we'll just say it lacks an identity. If you are Swiss or you're Canadian, I apologize. I don't mean this personally. But think about it. This blood type doesn't really have any identity. If they go and sit with the athletes, the athletes will just be like, eh, they're no threat to me. We don't, we're not bothered by them, right? So they can just sit there. They won't bother us and we won't bother them. So that's why this donation can occur. So let's extend this analogy to one more example. Okay, now we have this incredibly accepting lunch table because we've got the athletes, we've got the band geeks and the mathletes all at one table. So in this case, this red blood cell type would be type a, B positive, because it contains every single one of the three antigens that we could have, right? So think about it. If we have a mathlete coming in here being type O positive, this mathlete can actually associate with the other mathletes. So this is totally okay, because this receiving blood type is not receiving any new antigen. We've got the positives on both sides, right? And then lastly, we've got this band geek athlete, if that even exists, and they're going to try to associate with this blood type. And once again, this is absolutely okay because this guy has the A and the B, it's getting introduced to the A and the B, and we're happy. So this is the most accepting lunch table. In other words, this is the most accepting blood type. It's considered the universal recipient because whatever blood type it receives, there's no new antigens to be presented. So therefore, if you're type AB positive, you can receive quite literally anybody's blood type. But why are there these rules in the first place? Well, we need to talk about antibodies and the agglutination reaction next. So let's take this example of what happens if a person with type O negative blood is going to receive accidentally from a person with type O positive blood. So we're going to basically inject these red blood cells into a person with O negative blood. Okay, so first off, why can this not happen? Well, remember our number one rule. The receiving blood type being O negative cannot receive a new antigen, and that's exactly what's happening here. This is that positive antigen, and we are introducing this person's bloodstream with this foreign thing that it's never seen before, right? That's the issue here. This is considered foreign to this person, right? So now what's gonna happen is we have these things called lymphocytes, which are basically these white blood cells that are trained to recognize foreign things. And once they do recognize those foreign things, what they're going to do is produce what's called antibodies. And these antibodies are meant to basically attach and attack these foreign antigens. So they would look something like this. And you see how these antibodies produced by the lymphocytes will actually perfectly attach to all of these foreign antigens. And that's the lymphocytes way of basically attacking these guys. Now, the problem with this is in the bloodstream, if you have enough of these red blood cells, which you usually are when you're doing a blood transfusion, what will happen is all of these blood cells with the antibodies attaching to them will agglutinate, which will look something like this. So what's basically occurring here is all these foreign antigens on these red blood cells received by this person are getting all coagulated or basically cemented together because these antibodies are attaching and basically bundling them all up together. Now this is insanely dangerous because this could form clots, it could burst blood vessels, it could prevent your red blood cells from flowing properly, thus inhibiting the amount of oxygen that these cells are able to carry tube. If you watch this video, that explains a little more detail of that. So all in all, this reaction actually could be fatal. You definitely need to know which blood types can go with which so you don't give a person the wrong blood type.